Hello photography fans and welcome to another episode about classic cameras and classic photo gear. In today's episode we're gonna be looking at cyanotypes. Very simple technique, much simpler than salt printing that we did in the last video. And it just takes a few chemicals, very easy process, no need for darkroom, Let's get going. I would like to take just a few minutes just to say there haven't been any videos in the last four months, nearly five months. We just got a new addition to our family, a furry, furry child, um, four legs. Yeah. Um, we, got a, we got her in March, so we've been really busy training our puppy and uh, there was not much time. Uh, for videos. That doesn't mean there weren't much time for photography. Here's a puppy. Now, I also added something to my camera family. I've been thinking about getting uh, a new digital camera. I needed something with a uh, much, um, much better ISO. And uh, I decided to go for the D500 from Nikon. And I also needed something that does a video. And my camera that I'm recording with right now works just fine, but I need something something much better. So I ended up getting the D500. Now I know this is not a classic camera, maybe one day it will become, but uh, that's, uh, that's something I, I needed, so I got it. So I've been busy with that, I've been busy with the, with the puppy. And today finally got a few minutes and decided to go forward and do the video on cyanotypes. It should be pretty short, but um, let's see how it goes. After I'm done recording it, um, we'll see how much time it actually, uh, it, it, how long it's actually going to become. So I got these. Um, I got the kit from Bostick and Sullivan. Right now they're mixed with water, but they come in as powder. And that's uh, potassium ferricyanide and citric ammonium ferric ammonium citrate, rather. And you mix them one to one, and they become light sensitive. And then you coat them on your paper. For paper, I got same paper I've um, I used for my salt printing, which is Stonehenge 110. Very good paper. Very, I'm liking it a lot. Uh, you will need some hydrogen peroxide, just the stuff you put on your wounds. It's just um, what I do, I mix up one um, cap, full, cap full of the hydrogen peroxide per 500 milliliters of cold water tap water will work and no fixer needed just that and what else do you need um, oh. you need a negative to to print from and I use my negatives that I printed on inkjet printer so let's get started um, hope you enjoy this video hope you learn something let's get going these are really really cool prints and the technique itself is uh, it's really neat and it's been used so um, very recently, 70s, 80s, um, in engineering to make uh, blueprints. Yeah, very simple technique. Let's get cracking. A few more important things that I forgot to mention. You will need a hair dryer to dry the prints. Now, you don't have to have it, but that will speed things up. What you could do is coat the paper, put it in a um, dry box, and let it sit there for half an hour until the paper dries. I don't have half an hour, life is too short. Use Revlon Ionic Ceramic 1875 watt hair dryer. What is also important is that when you work, you have some kind of beverage, so I have that. And you also need some music. Now in my soul printing video, I was just doing some, um, some um, Hispanic music, uh, which I really enjoy, but today I feel like American military marches. So that's what's going on and let's get those prints going. 
Now for these prints, uh, what you need to do is premix your um, premix your chemistry or, or mix them together. So I know for about roughly eight by ten print, I'll be needing uh, twenty drops of each chemical. So I'll do is um, put twenty drops of um, ferrogallium citrate and potassium ferricyanide each in this little mixing uh, vessel and I'll swirl up and I'll coat my paper. Once the paper is coated, I'll use my Revlon dryer to to dry the to dry the print. Then the negative goes on and everything goes over the UV box. Simple. Let's do it.
tell that the paper is coated and it's dry, we can proceed to well, sandwich it together with the negative and, and then expose it. Well, there's nothing else left just to relax and watch the print cook depending on the density of the negative it will take between I would say 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes sometimes less so what you have to do is like after about five minutes you open the print and you check and if it's um, well done then you then just take it off now you know when it's done when it actual print starts looking like a negative it's got really really uh, it becomes um, almost negative like now I'll show you it's it's pretty interesting now if you still see a lot of light greenish yellowish color that will wash out and that will be just pure white paper or, or just base so depending on um, how dark or how light you want your print you may have stopped there or here depends so it's all it's all you there's no fixed recipe how it's supposed to look like after it's cooked we're gonna wash it in water until all the unexposed all the green stuff all the chemicals are washed out and then we're gonna fix it or, or soak it I don't fix it's not fixing we're gonna soak it in solution of hydrogen peroxide and water so again I use one cap full of uh, hydrogen peroxide and half a 500 milliliter of water, roughly. And I uh, soak it and then you'll see what happens. It's just, just magic. This, this contrast becomes so good and, and print becomes this so, such blue, like blue color. It's just amazing. So stay tuned for that. Now a few minutes has gone by, so we're gonna open up the print, see what's going on. It still needs a few more minutes, so I'm thinking um, I'm gonna give it three more. Through the miracle of time, I think this print is done. So we're gonna take it off the printer or off the UV box, and we're gonna try to see what's there. Now, once you remove the clamps, the print loses its register and kind of looks like that. So it kind of starts becoming into this negative-looking area. Now the yellowish color here 
uh, that's probably gonna become close to pure white but the flowers in this picture were actually pure white so uh, I'm gonna get this thing washed and see what happens So when you wash the print, it becomes um, it becomes lighter in color and lighter in contrast. And you want to wash it until all the green colors from the unexposed chemicals are washed up. So just about here. Now maybe you can see in the, on the camera, maybe not, but the contrast is pretty dull. So now what I'm going to do is introduce my hydrogen peroxide and you see how drastically the contrast changes. And I like to keep the print in hydrogen peroxide for about 10-15 seconds and the hydrogen peroxide mixture is use reusable so if you're doing many prints at the same time you can reuse that water with hydrogen peroxide. For this purpose I'm just going to dump it because uh, I'm just doing one print. So as you can see the print um, the print contrast has changed completely. It's really, really deep blue, almost like deep navy blue, some places even going into black. So now what I'm going to do is let the print wash, and after it's done washing, it's going to lighten up a bit, and we're going to hang it to dry, and that's it. So as the print is washing, um, I've got this negative and I'm thinking, may as well just print that, I have chemicals just sitting here, so why not do it? Let's do it.
So while the print is cooking, I'm gonna start cleaning up. It's like late, it's like 11 p.m. and um, yeah, I have to sleep too. So that's pretty much the print I'm talking about. The bottom was the snow, so you can see it's yellow. It's gonna turn out nearly pure white, with some with some shades of uh, grayish to it. <laughs> shades of gray. Um, tree turned out pretty pretty black, so that's gonna that's not gonna wash out. That's gonna turn pretty bluish, and the rest is gonna gray kind of gradient from light or whitish into blue pretty deep blue so let's watch the print and see what the final what the final product looks like what the print looks like after it's been oxidized with uh, hydrogen peroxide so now it's it's pretty it's pretty dark blue where it's supposed to and this is all white this was a snow scene it was a tree against a little hill you can see these pictures in one of my episodes about the um, uh, rolly flex I think a rolly flex autom automat so now I'm gonna wash the print and um, I'll show you the final final result <laughs> As you can hopefully see behind me, these um, this is what the prints look like, and they'll change slightly as they dry. They'll become um, uh, more contrasty, but you need to wash them real good. Make sure all the stuff is washed out. And what some people do, and I don't, is some people still tone these prints before they're washing. So after hydrogen peroxide, they put them in. Let's say really really concentrated uh, tea so they like 10 bags of tea and like 500 mils of hot water really really concentrated and that gives you these this like kind of darker color kind of like salt print um, kind of but I, I like to keep them on the bluish side so you can see behind me these were done a while back a couple months ago and they, they turned out pretty nice now these still have a long, long way to do to go, and this one I like the most. It's the wet, the one behind it turned out pretty good. I could have cooked it for a little bit longer, but but I didn't. So that's that. There's another project I have coming up, um, and the, the idea kind of I was inspired by a whole bunch of things, but the idea is to shoot my daughter in the forest as a Red Riding Hood. So I have this uh, uh, vision, it's going to be digital pictures probably. I may, I may shoot the one or two frames with film, but mostly digital and that's going to be 
pretty much the, the way I see it is uh, she's going to be wearing that red um, cape sort of uh, uh, attire and I'm going to use my off-camera flash to illuminate her while I'm working uh, with ambient light to see to, to darken it or to lighten it but I'm going for a little bit more moody moody um, um, scene for which I got this uh, lantern from from Goodwill and I'm planning on somehow fixing a flash in it somehow there's another lantern I have, a square one. It might, that might work better for a flash to go inside and just put maybe red gel or like blue gel. And once this thing flashes, it just illuminates this, this, this aura thing. So that's the idea I have. And I've been struggling with that idea since probably February. But now since almost end of May, long weekend's coming up. So I might, I might actually do that. And the only the only thing is I need to convince my daughter to to do it. She was kind of keen at first, but uh, we haven't really done it yet, so she she may still be quite apprehensive. But anyways, um, either this lantern or a big lantern, I'll be definitely doing Red Riding Hood, and I'll be showing you some of these pictures. I may actually turn them into uh, negative and print maybe cyan types or salt prints. That'll be pretty cool. Until next time, be sure to subscribe. I'm actually uh, reaching, was it, uh, nearly 2,000 subscribers, which is rich, is really, really great. I'm really excited. Like I think five more or ten more missing, um, and I'll have uh, 2,000 subscribers. When I started this channel, I never thought of reaching anywhere near 1,000 subscribers because of the content. It's not really something people people watch and I'm not definitely not the art of the photography guy and with connections to go and see and do places and I have a normal job that I have to do and I can't just put all my time into YouTube and photography which I wish I could but maybe one day but at this point this doesn't pay bills that pays bills so that goes first but anyways don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I didn't forget about you guys. And keep shooting film. Keep the film alive. And keep those classic beauties alive.